Hello, and welcome to the What's New video for Build 7710. My name is Matt Hyland, and I'm the Engineering Manager here at Codeware. Today, I want to go over some of the higher uh, level features that we've added in for this build. Now, I'm, I'm calling this build the Game Changer uh, because the productivity enhancements that we've added are so huge that we're going to save you guys a lot of time and money. Okay, So, let's get right into it. So I've got a simple uh, vertical vessel here, um, just to show you the first feature. And this is actually one of my personal uh, favorites. Um, it's nozzle copy and paste. So we can now copy a nozzle and paste it on the vessel. So you'll only have to, you know, maybe model a nozzle once. And if you have five of them, we can paste them. So we'll take this nozzle right here. And what I'll do is I'll just select the nozzle from the top right on the component tree. So you can see it's highlighted. Now on my keyboard, I'll just hold the control C and I'm going to hit control V. And there you go. We can now paste the nozzle around wherever we want, multiple components, things like that. So again, this is a huge efficiency generator. So if we're dealing with tall towers and let's say you've got 10 vents or even a heat exchange, you've got drains, you only need to model one of them and then we can copy and paste them wherever we need to around the vessel. So it saved you a lot of time right there as well. Now the next thing we've added in is what we call the API 660 loads. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, the API 660 is a document really pertaining to heat exchangers. But we thought um, there's some good useful stuff in that document that the guys building uh, vessels would really benefit as well. And they have a table of what they call standard nozzle loads. So when we model a nozzle now, we can turn this on by default that if we know it's a 12-inch nozzle, we can go to grab the loads for a 12-inch class 150 uh, flange, and we can apply those directly. So right over here, you can see our data set and our specification sheet data is API 660. So what I'm going to do, I'll model another nozzle very quickly right here for you. So we'll just put a 6-inch nozzle, and I'll put it on the second cylinder. like so. All right, so my nozzle connection, again, I'll just grab a uh, uh, just a 300 welding neck. This is just for the modeling. Now, when I click OK here, what we're going to do, you can see it's been modeled, are the nozzle loads have been automatically applied in here. Okay, so if I right click on this nozzle and, et nozzle and edit it, come back into the nozzle, go to the second screen, I can click on my WRC uh, local stress button, and you can see here that the API 660 loads have been applied for this particular nozzle size. So again, this is why it's an efficiency generator. You don't have to come in and type these loads in. We'll automatically pick them up for you. And again, there's an option in the set mode options if you want to turn it off and still do it the way you're used to as well. Now, what you can also do is if you've got, um, you know, you do a lot with customer A and customer B and they have separate um, specifications. They've got their own nozzle loadings that they want you to use. Well, you can also set those up as well. So if you come up here to the loads menu and select standard nozzle loads, what you can do is you can review all of the API 660 loads that are in the document, but you can also add a new data set. So if I click on add new data set right here, you can actually come in and type them in for all the various sizes. And you can select that data set when we're modeling nozzles. So Again, if you're using customer A, customer A here, their specifications, you can set that up before you can begin modeling nozzles, and then that way they'll be picked up. So again, I go back to why is this the efficiency generator? Well, again, we don't have to type these in or copy and paste them in, so it reduces potential error of typing in and just saves time as well. All right, so one of the other things that we added in, and again, this is the speed up um, time modeling and getting these uh, these compressed designs done is we've introduced shipping saddles in this build. So again, I'm using this vertical vessel as a tutorial, but instead of you know having to save a copy of this file, saving it as underscore shipping, making changes to the file to represent the shipping condition, we can now just model shipping saddles directly on this vessel. So under the support menu right here, we can just select shipping saddles. So now we can consider things like uh, road, rail, barge, ocean, and we consider all these loadings acting on the saddle. And this is the only new dialog here. This just you just need to let us know, you know, how is it going to be transported? So if you happen to be situated beside a rail line, well, you'd want to select rail. 
and then when we click next the same uh, saddle dialog that we've all come to know and get used to is available for us so what I can do is just work my way through the dialog click next, click OK and there are my shipping saddles and again this is really useful especially if I start putting platforms and ladle or ladders or if I've got really uh, uh, protruded nozzles that are sticking out quite a ways, I can rotate these saddles around to find the best placement when we're going into shipping. Okay, So shipping saddles have now been added as well. Now what are some of the other things that we've added in? Um, again to help speed up the modeling process, productivity enhancements, is we've introduced what we call a material scheme. So again if I come over here to their specification sheet data pane here, there's an option right down here for material scheme. If I pull down this menu, you can see we've got various schemes available. So I've got a carbon steel, I've got a carbon steel low temperature, I've got 304 stainless, 316, whatever we want. So when we select that scheme, we've associated with the material with a component. So if you're modeling a head, all my heads are always made out of 516 grade 70, that'll automatically grab it. Or if you're doing a stainless steel vessel, you know, we'll grab the 304 or 316 for each of the components that way. And again, as always, we, guys, we give you guys that flexibility to set up your own material schemes. So if you select the option here, add new material scheme, we'll open up the dialog and you can, you can actually adjust um, the carbon steel or you can make a new one and you can select what materials you want to be associated with every component as well. So again, if you've got a customer that you know, has specific requirements on materials, you can set up material schemes for those customers before you start the job as well. So that's been added in for you guys for build 7710. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys quickly is the new help pane. So if you guys remember in uh, 7700, we added in these panes at like the component tree, the specification sheet data pane, very useful panes. But we've also added in what we call a help pane. So I'll just expand this right here. And what this allows you guys to do is ask questions. Um, like if you're modeling and let's say I get a warning or I get deficiency, I'm not really sure what this means. Well, if it's after hours and you can't give us a call or write in, what you can do is come up here and type your question in. Uh, for example, you got a question about nozzles. What this will do is when you hit enter, this will actually take you to the Codeware Support Center and we will actually search our entire knowledge base or everything to do with nozzles and present you with what we think the appropriate question would be. So again, really useful when you're you know modeling in there, you're in that uh, that modeling mind zone and you want to get your answer quickly. Um, from here there's also tutorials, uh, getting started, options as well and what's new. Um, for example the webinars that we do every once in a while we post them or uh, uh, new features things like that. That'll pull up here in the what's new. Um, there's also a news and alerts. Um, for example I recently just published a flange interpretation. This is addressing the loadings on our standard flanges so I encourage everybody to click on that and have a read through. I really just break down the interpretation and really just clarify what it means for everybody and uh, you know if you're using Compress we've got you covered and what you would do with the program as well. Alright so those are some of the high level features that I wanted to show you guys today. Now, of course, if you guys want to see a full listing of features, maintenance fixes, things like that we've done, you can always come up here to the Help menu and select a View History right here. This will pull up our uh, history document and you can go through everything. Or if you guys want to see uh, anything further, like I said, you can always give us a call, uh, email sales at codeware.com or call us at 941-927-2670 and we can definitely help you out. Uh, but I'd like to thank you for taking your time to watch this quick video, and I know this build is really going to benefit everybody, so I hope you guys enjoy it.